Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my video blog series. I am your host, Nick Renard, and today we are going to be going over how to test goals and conversions in Google Analytics. So let's get started. Alright, so for a tracking overview, uh, the title of this is how to track goals and conversions in analytics. It's a little misleading because goals and conversions are pretty much the same thing. Uh, in Google AdWords they call them conversions. You can see the first point here. But in analytics they have something called goal completions which is essentially the same thing but they just they call them goal completions. So um, yeah those those two words can be used interchangeably but um, yeah we'll, we'll refer to them as either one depending on what platform we're talking about. Now with regards to the tracking code in terms of tracking on either AdWords or Analytics, there is actually you can actually track through either one of the platforms. Uh, the difference is is um, well, I guess I'll go over the similarities. The sli similarity between tra tracking on either platform is it's pretty much the exact same process. There's a a, p a snippet of code that tracks the conversions that you're wanting to track whether it's a form submission or a call or a, a quote you know a, a quote form submission I guess it's the same thing as a form submission but um, there's a there's a snippet of code you insert on your site on the page that has the conversion and once that code is in place then it'll start tracking and importing those goals into you know either AdWords or analytics whichever platform you use now the AdWords tracking is it's a little bit simpler uh, again you're just gonna have to put the code on the site the reason that it's simpler is that you're only using one platform which is AdWords if you use analytics uh, analytics isn't actually an advertising platform so if you if you do your tracking through analytics then um, you can import goals over to AdWords but you're gonna have to be bouncing back and forth between AdWords and analytics so you will have to know, know how to use both of those platforms uh, if you just do it through Google AdWords you get the advantage of not ever needing to learn how to use Google Analytics but um, I highly recommend that you, you you'll see in the note here it says that analytics is much preferred uh, which is very very true any kind of tracking any kind of remarketing code anything I always do it through analytics um, I already know how to use both platforms so I, I kind of have that benefit that I don't have to worry about having to learn a new platform but um, yeah analytics is just it's significantly more granular uh, we can we can be uh, much, well, I hate to use the word granular again, but we, we, we can be significantly more granular with the types of lists that we create for like remarketing or anything like that. Um, analytics is just a better platform when you're, um, when you're talking about uh, analyzing your users and uh, just digging up information about your accounts. AdWords is kind of the vanilla 101 version of analytics. Anyways, that's kind of the difference between the two. Um, in analytics, the way that we track our conversions is by using UTM codes and people who have even used Google Ana Analytics before uh, may not uh, really have well I guess if you're an experienced user you definitely should have used them by now but um, a lot of the UTM codes are automatically imported from AdWords already uh, there's a setting that defaults to import that data for you so that you don't have to actually manually input it however um, there's a lot of other things that you'll want to manually import uh, your your um, your UTM codes in order to know where your traffic is coming from. So if you're using something like Bing or Amazon or another platform, or even if you're using Google and you just don't have that default setting um, there, or you want to track your campaign separately as opposed to all coming in as just from AdWords, uh, then you'll have to use UTM codes. And there's there's a handful of different types of UTM codes that we use. The the first two main ones are right here: source and medium. Uh, source is the platform that you're coming from, so that's going to be Google, Bing, Amazon, eBay, etc., etc., etc. And then the medium is going to be uh, the whether it's going to differentiate whether it's coming from uh, organic traffic, whether it's paid traffic, uh, whether it's somebody just typing in the website directly. We call that direct traffic. Uh, so there's quite a few different mediums that people can come from and then you there's a handful of other ones that we can use to track the type of traffic that is coming from those advertising campaigns so for example you see the one here that says term 
Um, so we could track the keyword that triggered that traffic so we can uh, get data on what keywords are performing well. Uh, there's one for uh, we can track content so if we want to track the different um, assets or uh, websites that we're sending people to or um, yeah, and then the last one here, campaign, is kind of similar to content. We can track the campaign that it's coming from. So there's a lot of different things that we can. Um, I mean, if you want to, if you want to do a little, this is just kind of a one-on-one overview on UTM codes. But if you want to learn more about it, I suggest looking it up, and um, yeah, learning how that stuff is, uh, how it's implemented, and how it works. Um, let's go ahead and move. I actually, in the picture here, you can see the source medium. Uh, you can see in this account here it says direct slash none um, direct uh, means that they're directly typing in the website here uh, the second one says Google CPC this means that they came from Google and that it was a um, it was a paid click so uh, if, if for example in the third one the difference between these two is the number two here is um, someone you know someone that paid for the traffic or you paid for that traffic and then organic is you didn't pay for that traffic and um, yeah, anyways, let's move on here. Uh, so UTM codes, what do they look like? Uh, UTM actually stands for Urchin Tracking Module, which I'm surprised how few people know that. It's kind of like when people you ask people if they know what SUV means, even though they own an SUV and they don't know what it means. Um, it's kind of the same thing for UTMs. People just refer, refer to them as UTMs. Um, but it's a, it's a format that's used specifically by Google to track your unique URLs. There are other types of tracking that you can use, uh, and a lot of other platforms are going to use things that are different than UTMs, but uh, in the, the concept or in theory, everything is kind of the same. It's just tracking where your traffic is coming from. And you can see a good example of what a UTM code looks like in the middle of the screen here. It says www.examplewebsite.com. And then you can see that there's these little question and ampersand signs, uh, UTM source equals Google, UTM medium equals CPC, U UTM term equals keyword, UTM content equals dental, UTM campaign equals uh, IND, which stands for industry short tail. Um, so you can see that we're tracking that it's coming from Google, it's a paid click, uh, it's tracking the keyword, so whatever keyword they triggered to get here, it'll um, it'll autofill with that. Uh, the content is dental, so it must be sending them to some kind of dental asset. Um, and then uh, industry short tail is just the name of the campaign in AdWords. Um, yeah, that's that's what it looks like. So when you when you if you ever pay or if you ever click on a paid ad and you get to the landing page and you see all this kind of mumbo jumbo jargon at the end of your uh, at the end of the URL those are tracking parameters it may not be UTM it may be something something different than UTM codes but um, it's the same kind of thing where it's just tracking where your click is coming from and populating that to there uh, whether it's analytics or whatever platform they're using to track their traffic alright uh, so yeah you see the example here um, the UTM source equals Google, UTM medium equals CPC, how it's tracking that, and then uh, you can see this this picture from the previous slide. All of this data, when when um, someone clicks on an ad and gets to this website with the, these UTM codes, um, then it populates that, uh, or I guess it segments that within analytics so that you can break it up to see, you know, how much traffic is coming from Google, how much traffic is coming from Bing, you know, how much is how much of that traffic is paid, how much of that traffic is organic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So um, the original name of, we kind of, I tangented it there just explaining a little bit about UTM codes, but the original name of this blog was, or vlog, was called How to Test Goals and Conversions in Analytics. So you're probably wondering where I'm going with this. What we're going to do is we're going to use the UTM codes to test a conversion that you you know want to track on your website so if you have a website I'm going to use an example here for a dog training website that I, I just made up for those of you who don't know I used to do dog training um, as my career so I use a lot of dog training examples so uh, we're gonna pretend like we have a website where we have a contact contact request form for dog training and this is really typical you'll see this on sites of people you know saying like call us today or you know we'll send you a free quote for you know if you give us your information or something like that uh, this is a similar type of thing where you enter your name your phone number your email and you know you click a button and um, yeah we track that as a conversion uh, 
the way that Google differentiates, you know, because let's say you get 30 conversions in a month, um, the way that Google differentiates where those conversions came from is through the UTM code. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to manually replace all of the UTM codes with a test code and it's going to populate in analytics with how um, with it's 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 you're essentially going to run a fake test conversion to see if it works and I'll I'll show you how that works in a second here um, so yeah normally we'll, we'll move on here normally your URL would have the UTM source equals Google UTM C medium equals CPC blah 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 um, these parameters they tell analytics where the traffic is coming from but to run a test conversion to know whether or not that conversion tracking is working, we're going to change those parameters to, it really doesn't matter what you change it to, but um, in this example, you can see here how I changed the URL from UTM source Google and UTM medium equals CPC, and I changed it to UTM source equals NIC and uh, UTM medium equals test conversion. So what we're doing is we're changing the source to NIC or test or whatever you want to use for your test and then you ch change the medium to you know test or something else as well and what that's going to do is it's going to bring up the same contact request form whether you type in this URL or this URL here it doesn't matter but when you submit the form analytics is going to differentiate those two form submissions as one being from Google paid the first one's going to be from Google Paid, and the second one is going to be from Nick Test Conversion. Sounds weird, but that is exactly how Analytics is going to import it, and I'll show you that here on the next couple slides. So, you'll need to submit a form. So, on your website, wherever your contact form submission is, go ahead and fill in the, uh, the UTM codes with the the replace Google and CPC with your test one. So, replace it with test and test conversion. And, uh, and then in analytics, well, after you've uh, submitted that, go ahead and fill out the form and click the learn more button on your form. And in analytics, if you go to acquisition, all traffic, and source medium, which is where we view where the source and mediums from our traffic are coming from, um, then it's going to come up under that section. Um, you're going to have to do a couple other things here. You're going to have to type in the name of your test parameters. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead a, sl a slide because there's an example of what it looks like. But you, uh, on the screen in analytics, you can see under source medium, if uh, if you use NIC for your source, then all you do is type NIC into the search, and all of the um, all of the traffic that came from that source is going to filter out. So it's going to it's going to get rid of all of the other clicks on the website besides the ones that have NIC because that's what you're searching for. Um, make sure when you do that you're that you're displaying the proper conversion. So if you're doing a test conversion on like you know a quote form, make sure that under this under the conversion drop down box that you I, I I can't tell you how many times that somebody's confused in analytics about why something isn't showing up that they just um, uh, number one would be the date range if they're always looking at a wrong date range or um, the goal that they have selected is the wrong goal so make sure you're selected on the right goal and the right date range and um, and it all, the last note says uh, allow up to 24 hours for these conversions to register. Uh, the reason that is is just because sometimes Google has a bit of a lag time when importing that data into analytics so if you give it 24 if you don't see it right away just wait a day check it tomorrow and it'll be there but um, this example here is a, a set of conversions that I ran uh, for one of our clients that um, we were testing to see if all of their uh, their forms were working so what I did is I typed in the URL for the form that we wanted to track and then I changed the source to Nick and I changed the medium to uh, whatever I actually changed it to the name of the campaign that we were testing it from so you can really fill in medium with you know whatever you want um, I in this case I used it to uh, to separate them so that way I could see which what, what I wanted to do in this particular example is I wanted to see if any of these goal completions came up zero 
as not meaning it didn't actually go through or it didn't actually register, then I would be able to tr trace backwards to see, like let's say number eight here came up with a zero, then I would know that their, you know, their the remarketing campaign here it says remark test remarketing in here. I would know that that was the culprit for the one that um, wasn't working with the conversion tracking. So it's kind of a it, it's kind of a weird way of tracking or, or testing your conversion tracking, but you can see how by altering the UTM parameters and then doing the form submission with the altered U UTM parameters, we can essentially um, run a fake conversion and import where that conversion came from in analytics uh, by going through this process. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have. It is kind of a complicated process. If you have any questions about it, feel free to go ahead and post in the comments section. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next week's episode and I'll talk to you guys then. Thanks.